Hi, this is Doug Wolf at Boise State University, and we're back again with Sweet Home 3D and uh, working on creating rooms to use in your adventure game. In this video, uh, we're going to talk about how you actually capture the images that you're going to use in your game. You, know, you want a view of each wall in the room, so you need four views of each room. Um, first thing I want to mention is that uh, I put in a few more furniture and cleaned up some other details like fixing window heights from the last time you saw this in, at the end of the previous video. So the rooms are a little more full now. Um, we've got, particularly in the long skinny room, I've added this desk, a bookcase, uh, a big aquarium, a chair, and uh, a plant. Okay. Uh, the first thing that is really critical here is you need to go to the 3D view menu and choose virtual visit. Right now we've been looking at the aerial view, um, which is kind of more of a top-down look. We want to look as though we are in the room. So we select virtual visit. And you'll notice over here in my plan area, we've added this weird UFO looking thing. That's actually a representation of a camera. And so I can take this and drag this into one of my rooms. And you'll notice we've got a view shown down below of what that room looks like. I will mention that uh, as you're working in here, you're going to want to be looking at the bottom part of the screen a lot. So I would um, drag up the, uh, the little separator bar to get more space down there. And it'll mean a lot of scrolling of the area up here, but that will help you. Um, so you see as I move the camera up above, my sh view below shifts. And similar to the way you can rotate furniture, you can also rotate the camera. So here's the rotation handle on the camera. So I can rotate it, look at a different wall. Okay. Oh. One thing I will mention is it's hard to get it straight again. And so I recommend doing a lot of your fine tuning by double clicking the camera and it'll bring up this box so you can set the body angle is that rotation. The head angle is how much it tilts up or down. Um, the eye elevation, um, by default, it gives you something five and a half feet or so. And I find that tends to be too much. So I use four feet, six inches seems to work pretty well and give you a good view of the room. Um, if you wanted a mouse eye view or something, you could obviously make this a very small number. It puts the camera very close to the floor. Um, so, and then the head angle is the um, sort of the tilt up and down of the camera. Uh, a little easier way to set the tilt is with these little triangles here in the middle. Um, that If you click those, that will change the tilt a little bit. Okay, so we've got a pretty good view of this room at the moment. So what we need to do next is come over here to the 3D view menu again. And down here is create photo. So if I select that, um, you'll notice there's nothing there at first. We have to give it some settings and then ask it to create the photo for us. Um, I would choose by default, it wants to give you the same dimensions as you're looking at in the other window. And you'll want to change that to something appropriate for your game. Um, the default for game salad is 480 by 320, so you can set it to that. Um, the apply proportions um, will just simply, if you're trying to get a certain view, like a square view or something, um, 480 by 320 happens to be a 3 to 2 proportion. So that's why I've got it set there. And then there is this slider down here, and I'm going to set it over to fast for the moment. And if I set it to fast and hit the create button, it very quickly gives me a, a view that will be, when I save it, 480 pixels by 320 pixels, and it'll be rendered in a very simple, um, in a very simple way. So you won't see a lot of fancy lighting effects. It just gives you a basic view. And really, for your game, this is fine. You could just use this exactly as it is. If some of you are a little more perfectionists, um, you might want to go with some better settings. If we bump up to the next setting, it will give us a view similar to this, but it will add some shadows. So let me hit that, and you notice we now have some shadows under the furniture. So again, just adds a little more realism to it. 
the next bump up um, actually does a lot more with the lighting. And uh, one of the things you'll note is that it adds this checkbox for add ceiling lights. If you haven't placed any lights in your room, you're probably going to need that. And so I'm going to select that and hit create. This will take a little longer to render. But you'll notice it gives you a more realistic view of your room. You'll also notice I've got some light coming in through the window because I've selected uh, noon as the time down here. If I were to change that AM or, or that PM to an AM and then create it, I'll now have a dark view. And you'll notice I'm even getting a little reflection of the window on the opposite side of the room showing in here. So I'm going to go ahead and set that back to, uh, oops, let's set that back to 12 p.m. Okay. Um, one other thing, if you don't like the lighting that you get from the uh, default adding of ceiling lights, um, what you can do instead is come back over here, get back to this view where you can see this a little bit better, and add some of your own lights. And that's in a category over here called lights. And the best one tends to be the incandescent light source. And for a room this size, I found by experience, you need to add about four lights. And you can also set the intensity of the lights. I think by default they're at 50%, and I found that 35% is a little more natural. So I'll just quickly do this and show you what that looks like. I'm just double clicking on these to bring up the box to edit the lights. Okay, so now if we go back to create photo. Okay, and so I've got a little brighter illumination in this room than I had before. Uh, when you've got it the way you want it, then you can click the save button and it gives you the option to uh, gives you the option to save it as several different file types, or I guess just PNG, which is good for what you're you're doing. Okay, now the one thing that I should mention that is a problem is if you have a long skinny room like this, and let's say I want to get a view of that desk, so I move my camera in here, and you notice that. Um, I'm really struggling to see the whole room. Let's go into the photo view and I'll just go to the fast fast render. And you notice that I'm not getting much of the rest of the room here. I really need to pull the camera back. But if I pull the camera back, then I'm staring at the outside wall of my room. So what do you do about that? Well, here's what I've discovered is the easiest way to deal with this. I'm going to bring this down for a minute. Select this wall here, double click it, and where it has the height of the wall, change that to one inch or a half an inch, something, something very small. Now you notice down below I'm seeing something brown. That's the back of this bookcase which is in my way. The way I can deal with that is go over here to the list in the lower left, find that bookcase which is here, and uncheck the visible box. So the bookcase has now become invisible. My wall is only an inch high. And so now I can pull the camera back to get the view that I'd like to get. So now I'm getting the full view of the wall. And I can come over here to create photo. And there I've got my entire wall there. So that's the basics of Sweet Home 3D. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know and I'll be happy to try and help you.